Oh, you have joined us for a great sister to sister. Someone wrote in and asked, is it okay for me to have coffee with my ex? Mm. Ooh. Well, if you do have coffee, how much of your past are you gonna reveal? I don't know. Find out what the sisters think about this coming up. Well, hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. You have joined lively discussion here. We are five women, I usually say beautiful women of God, and we answer the questions of the world from a godly biblical perspective. So I have a good question for you girls. This is what it is. My husband and I have completely different personalities how we make a decision, but while we were dating, that was fun. Now married a few years, it's like we can't agree on anything. How do we overcome personality differences in the marriage? Oh boy. Roxanne, you wanna take a stab yeah, at this one? Yeah, our producer said, go for it, Roxy. You're always talking about how you and your husband are different. I learned, <laughs> I learned, the Bible says by the things we suffered, or maybe really Alan suffered. <laughs> Uh, of dueling good. personalities. Now, I like that, you know, but he's a more quiet, soft, genteel kind of guy. But I think what it does, because the scripture says love doesn't seek its own way. Wow. All right, so it exposes our selfishness, our desire for our own way, our um, unreasonableness, unreasonableness, yes. is that my word? And the Bible does say, come, let us reason together. We argue and wrestle with God. So we, as we say in our closing, as iron sharpens mm -hmm. iron, we've become smoother, more gentle, more caring and listening about what the other person says. So in that dueling personality, she or he is your helpmate. Allow yourself to be the, smooth, the uh, rough edges to be smoothed off so that you can come to compromise. You can be reasonable. And I think pick your battles too. Yes. Think about that. Yeah. I mean, you cannot battle every single thing, no. really. I'm concerned with the word, how can we overcome our personality differences in marriage? Well, if you let us know, just give us a call. I mean, because, you know, you don't change your personality. And I just wrote down, what are the big rocks? You need to be in agreement on those big yes. rocks or the main things, you know, yes. like, are we plant raising our children in the house of the Lord? What house are we going to be connected to? you know, what are we doing with our, like big picture, big rock mm. stuff. There's like little things that I'm not sure you'll ever always agree on, you know, it, but, but divorces happen over the little things. Right. So yes. the little things can become the big thing. So, I mean, honestly, you just have to, you have to pray and ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. And I mean, to be, you have to submit therefore one to another and and I always like my husband to lead. I like to push him as a leader. So I just encourage women, push him to lead your family and follow. Right. Well, and you said, how do we get to a decision? We come from it from different personalities. Right, right. I don't think that's something to overcome. I think that's something to embrace because when mm -hmm. you look at something from different perspectives, that's actually a gift to be able to have two people look at something, a problem, to be looking at it from different perspectives, that's actually a really great way to look at something differently. Yeah. You know, that's mm -hmm. something that's good for your husband to look at it from one way to you look at it from a different way and you're both looking at it from a different perspective. You're seeing something that he's not seeing. Right, right. You know, that's a gift to each other to be able to come together and to see that and say, okay, I didn't see it from that perspective. Kind of like what we do here when right. you're like, yes. oh, I didn't think of it that right. way. I didn't mm -hmm. see it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you're always gonna, you know, agree 100%, but you can reason together because we care about each mm -hmm. other. And we're like, okay, I can see it from that perspective. Right. I think that's answering the question, well, but do you it. get along? You know, I'm not gonna answer from the point of whether we get along or not, because I think that they covered it. But I, I, you know, the thing that stood out to me was while dating, it was fun. 
And mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. speaks to me about the prerequisites of marriage and what you need to look mm -hmm. at, how to consider a matter, how to weigh a matter. And so some of the very things that you find um, entertaining, if you will, when you're dating can really be problematic mm -hmm. as you come into the marriage. Yeah, and so I think the time to really deal right. with it is before before yeah, you get married. True. You know, um, when mm -hmm. I was coming up in the Lord, we were blessed and, and we had some great mentors. And one of them was, uh, we referred to him as Uncle Verley, but it was Pastor Verley Smith. And I'll never forget in the midst of an all night prayer, he sat us down and he began to talk to us about what we need to do when you consider marriage. And he covered everything. I mean, the stuff you don't like to talk about, like sex and, and, you know, finances and all of those kind of things. If you marry somebody of a different age and all of that. And I, I just, it, I think from that, it has been firebrand in my spirit. You know, be proactive. Don't wait. Don't, don't go in with the illusion that, mm. you know, this will change when we get married. Right. And so if those things right. are rubbing you the wrong way now while you're dating, you may want to reflect on that. That's true. That's true. Well, speaking of dating, I have a, this is another question that's really good too and a, radi a lady writes to us I have a church full of lovely people that want to set me up I have someone for that for you too okay um, it's their mission to find me a husband I'm okay with not being married even when I tell them that ooh, they continue because we want everybody happy we think married people are the happiest Corey what do you do oh man I would I would have to fight the urge to say something sarcastic, like, okay, and I'll set you up with a stylist. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> like, I really would have to fight the urge to do something like that. But I mean, honestly, that's, that's a tough situation because she's already said to them, like, you know, I'm okay, I'm okay I'm and okay. they're still continuing. Honestly, I would just, you know, continue to point to the word and say, look, Jesus was single and he said, right. you know, do as I do, you know, WWJD. But do you think she's really happy or is she just saying yes, that? I mean, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. I'm gonna, go ahead. No, okay. No, I'm going to jump in here because Jesus <laughs> even rebuked Apostle Peter, whom he loved. You're not seeking the purposes of God. You're seeking your own or others' Come human on. interests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we do this to single people, we're, I think we're saying to them when they're content, you're not a whole person. That's true. I really dislike when people say, I have my other half or I'm complete now. Right. You better be somewhat complete when you're getting That's into right. that marriage right. or you're gonna have some big problems if you think that other person is gonna fulfill something you are lacking. I mean, they yeah. might fulfill it, praise God that they do, but you can't seek that person to be your Lord and Savior. And I agree with Corey. Jesus was single. He was fine that way. God intended that. So we sometimes have to think God intends some single people to be single because he has a different mission for their lives. And I think the danger is that you are, number one, which is probably not your heart, you're communicating to me that I am not fulfilled, you know, yes, right. and that I'm, I'm less than who and what I am. The other thing you're communicating to me is I'm not capable of getting, you know, of my own. You know, um, why do I need you to match me up with someone? I know what I want. I know what I'm attracted to. So instead of matchmaking me with a person, if you think that I struggle in that arena, matchmake me with God, you know, mm, okay. help me discover who I am so that mm -hmm. I attract or I'm in a position because remember, he that, you guys know how I feel about this, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Amen. When a woman goes after a man, you kill the hunter and stink in him. I had a little Ooh. different perspective when I read this question. Mm -hmm. I thought, I have a church full of lovely people that okay. want to set me up. And I thought, she has a church full of people that think she's beautiful, yes. that think she's yes. smart, that think she's got it all going on. So maybe if that person that's so annoyed would just flip the switch and say, thank God, they are all thinking oh, about me. Oh, and they yes. think very highly of me. Uh, to want to introduce me to every amazing guy that walks through yes, the door. I love yeah, but they're not I love amazing. Oh, no, oh. Well, no, it's okay though. It's okay. I love this. We have different Amy perspectives on it. amazing person. <laughs> That's right. I love this. Thank you for that crazy question. And this is a really crazy question too. And it goes like this. Huh, I am dating someone who is a virgin. I am not. It's getting serious. 
is this important to the relationship that I reveal my past? Flo, I'm, I'm going to you on this. Okay. Yeah, okay. please okay. do. Please come to me on that one. Um, cause <laughs> We're all coming to yeah. you. <laughs> I, I don't think that it's necessary to reveal your past in the sense of how many partners or, you know, all of that. But I do think you need to reveal the fact that you are not a virgin. You know, no different than when we, we talk about a sexless marriage and all of that. If you have a medical issue, it is deception mm -hmm. for you to marry someone and wait on, a, you know, the, the mm -hmm. marriage night for them to find out that they have some issues to deal with. And when you come together, if hopefully they're, they're heading towards marriage, that's where I'm going with the, the answer. You know, I don't want to discover on my wedding night that you are expecting me to perform like Susie, kiss like Roxy, <laughs> hug like, you know, Kathy. No, you know, I want my, look at Kathy, she about fell off the chair. <laughs> Don't put my name Don't in that list. Name in that question. No. <laughs> but I, I think that that's important. I, I don't think that, I mean, I just, I don't personally, you guys might have a different perspective on it. I personally, like, once you take out the trash, do you really care what's in it? Like, I don't want to know good. all the, you know, <laughs> partners somebody else had. The fact that you had a partner, Yes, especially if I'm a virgin and been keeping myself, because I may be expecting yeah. you to be one too. Yeah. So don't deceive me. I so think the, answers. the facts are a really big de deal, but mm -hmm. not the intimate details. So the like, I mean, mm -hmm. like if somebody's been with 30 people versus two, I mean, that's kind of a big difference, you know? I mean, I, I need to know your sexual past history if there is one, because that could affect my life and my children if you've gotten some disease, you become one with all of these people and then that's going to come to me. I think it's, I think it's a really big deal, but I don't want to know every single one where it was at. And all, but I, I think the facts a, is, and the truth are of essence and vital. Ooh, good. Girls, mm. what do you think? I think you just need to be honest no matter that's what. Right. That's I think, right. and that's I think right. if it's like, again, you talked about mm. earlier about before you're married mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you need to discuss these things That's and right. if this is something that is bothering either one of you it sounds like it's bothering her right. more than the other person well, he doesn't know well mm -hmm. yeah I just think it's something that you know needs to be discussed and if the other person is just like needs to know like numbers details like whatever like if you're not comfortable saying that, then you need to say, I'm not comfortable revealing that. And if that's gonna continue to bother him, that might be the, the stopping point wow. and they don't continue on. Wow. So let me just say this, whether if I'm dating someone, whether they ever reveal to me how many partners or whatever, even if they tell me they are a virgin, we are going to get tested. Oh. Okay. I am not waiting. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it. Roxanne, right. what do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I think if it's important to your date, whoever it is, male or female, it doesn't say, you need to say, you need to tell them exactly what they need to know. That's right. Uh, I got giggling girls over here. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Tested. You're going to get well, tested. No, no, not but there's a point because they can say, I am a virgin and could be lying. To, uh, right to your oh, face. I was wondering oh. how she knew he yeah. was a virgin. And, or the definition yes, of being yes. a virgin, which some people... Yeah, I mean, people do oh different things. We could go deep. Oh, yeah, yeah, my. What is, oh yeah, I see. What okay. You understand well, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, Roxy, yeah. hold your thought there. Oh, no. Because I'm, I'm sure I'm it's done. a great she wisdom. Done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Roxy. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're crazy. Thank you. But you're not. You're sane, and you write us really tough questions. Stay there, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. What a show this is. This is such a great show because you hear the hearts and different opinions of all of the sisters. And I don't know what they're gonna say to this one, so stay tuned, seatbelt on. All right, is it okay to have coffee with an ex? Now, you wrote this to us. Uh, my husband does not think so. <laughs> right. Wah. Okay, Wah. So, well, what? first what? I wanna preface it that my grandparents could not stay married but they got divorced and they were the best of friends, but they did not remarry. So they were together all the time. And I think That's it's good. important That's for the example. sake of the children, if you have children involved, that the exes get along. That's but going to have coffee with an ex, 
that your husband doesn't want you to. Listen, there's a history there. Talking mm -hmm. about sex, mm -hmm. there's a history of sex, there's a history of love, there's a, a history of covenant, mm -hmm. and there's already something there. Mm -hmm. And it could come back right. to yeah. life, yeah. Yeah. which agree. now I causes agree. problems with the new husband and possibly blended families. So I think to be very cautious and wise. Right. I, I do know. too. I don't even think cautious is the right word. I think there's absolutely slam the door shut on this. Like do not even open it a crack. Do not do this. Like do not. It, especially if your husband is not on board with right. it. Like this is this is a recipe for disaster. Do not have coffee with your ex. Like that's my opinion on this, but I just think this is not the right avenue, the right way to go, the right if you need to discuss things about the children or whatever, if you're remarried, you should not be meeting up with your ex one on one in a social situation. Ooh, that's that's telling it you, like you, it is. You know what, I um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I wanna hear Roxy's piece no, too, so. <laughs> I, I do, because I, I guess I, you know, it, earlier in years, I might have thought a little different, but one of the things that bothers me about the church is that we put so much emphasis, and this may cause some letters to come in, but hey, um, we put so much emphasis on opposite sex, and oh, the first thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna go, fall into sin. Well, first of all, you don't fall into sin, you walk into it, you plan it out. Right. So that's mm. first. Second of all, if there is relationship there, because I am of, you know, blended family dynamics, you know, there needs to be communication, you know? Um, they have to have some form of communication. And it, it really is, if, if it were my husband and I, it's his job as my partner to make me feel secure. It is my job as his partner to make him feel That's secure, good, you know? And so he needs, to, if he is not okay with me sitting down and having coffee, then, you know, I definitely consider that. I, I agree with you a thousand percent. The other thing is, though, don't make, you know, as Christians, stop making everything like God is so weak. And if I, you know, have coffee with Roxy's husband or you see me talking with Roxy's husband, something's got to be going no, on. No, you know, no, no. I, I just, it, it, it's something about that that just disturbs me. And I get it. Don't misunderstand me. Hear me and hear me well, because we're going to waste time challenging something that doesn't need to be challenged. That is a school of thought. And I agree with it to a level. But I have lived a little longer and I've had some experience experiences is that you a man that has had an experience is not at the mercy of another man's theory and so you Ooh. have communication is essential to life and so I know what I like and if I am you know attracted to six-pack deep dark chocolate and he comes walking in the room I don't need to be spending time with him you understand what I'm saying so I mean that's just the way it is but I think you know if the ex, in, you know, if it's an ex-husband, an ex-boyfriend, you know if something begins to move in you. And I ought to have enough God in me to tap into that way of escape. That's Roxy, good. please, I, I know you've got to have something. But no, I have to say one thing. Right. One okay. thing, though, there's a big difference between <laughs> having a, a, coffee with Roxy's husband and your ex, okay. who you did have a relationship yeah. with. You made and that who, point. You know, know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I am all for, I yeah. am not against having a one-on-one -on -one with the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. I'm having it against having it with your ex. I want that to hear was the what question. Roxanne has Roxy, yeah. to say. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can have coffee with my husband. It's fine. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? No, no, I'm going to have coffee too with Flo. Oh, okay. good. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, That's good. What I want to say is I guess your motives could be pure, mm -hmm. but what's your purpose? You know, we, a lot of Christians say, my motives, I didn't intend anything by it. Your motives might be right. What are you portraying to your husband, to your family? Is there something that you're portraying that's different than your pure motives? That's and right. sometimes we have to do things not because we, it's, it's the right purpose, but maybe we're portraying something to somebody else that we can't then bring back I in. Agree. So don't right. always do it because your motives are pure. Condescend, at least bow down at least sometimes to hurting right. somebody else right. and thinking about somebody else, and then maybe they will release that That's and say, right. I'm That's perfectly so fine. That's because right. you That's said right. no, then they say, go ahead, it's fine. Right. I had right. no idea that this question <laughs> would elicit this kind of response because I need to get to this last question because it is so good. Mm -hmm. And here it is. 
Uh, Corey, I'm coming to you first. I'm coming to everybody on this. Finish this sentence. Something I wish I would have let go of sooner is dot, dot, dot. Uh, the fear and stigma of going to a counselor or a therapist. Oh. oh. That's so good. That is good. Roxanne. Yes, giving my opinion before all the facts are on the table. Really? Jumping in and giving an opinion before I hear all the facts. Well, that's I've a big, learned you're a long time. You're an attorney. Right. So right. you, you well, are schooled in hearing both sides. And the world gives you training that you need for the church. It does. Right. And I love, I love your response, Corey, because people need to hear that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that counselors are oh, good for absolutely. our hearts and our minds and our souls. 100%. Soul. Yep. Right. What do you have, Flo? I wish I would have given up sooner. I am so glad on this one I actually have an answer. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so when I read this right away and it came to me so easy, the right to, you know, to, to be understood. You know, mm -hmm. that was a big thing with me, you know, wanting people to understand where I was coming mm -hmm. from, what my motive was, mm -hmm. what my heart was, and all of that. And so, so you felt that you weren't being understood? Well, I know there were times that, uh, that we all are, are, are yeah. misunderstood, was but that okay. was something, yeah, that was oh, something oh, that was... So you're I okay if someone doesn't understand you, now you're okay I am. now? Now, now I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that is good. so deep. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's Amy, that's good. what do you uh, have? Something I wish I would have let go of sooner is when people leave our church. Oh, oh that's good. I know. That's so hard because yeah, you're yeah. a pastor and you're yeah. a shepherd and you love them and you invest in yeah, them right. and you pray yeah. for them yeah. Yeah. and you're thinking about them and you're laying down your life and they can just walk in and out of your heart. So and I wish I, I could have just let them go sooner. I don't think people understand <clears throat> how deeply a pastor feels oh, for their yeah. flock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, wow, what a real answer. What great yeah. answers to all of you. And thank you for that crazy, wild question that allowed <laughs> us to bring our hearts to you. We'll be right back. We're going to wrap this thing up. As always, we had quite a bit of questions today and quite a bit of answers. However, you know that we always like to leave you with the scripture. And this particular scripture, we personally believe, is the best answer we could possibly give you really for any question, any circumstance, any situation. And you can find it in Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together, in perfect harmony. You know, love is such a powerful catalyst, but my God, it takes work. And it is cultivated by the circumstances and the situations that we go through in life. The very thing that you would look to run away from is the very thing that God may allow you to experience because the end result is the follow ground gets broken up and what begins to break through is the fruit of the spirit, which is love. What about love? It's patient. It's kind. It doesn't hold on to evil. It Listen, it is willing to not boast. It's not proud. You know, when we love and we display the character of God, we are his expression in the earth. So today we wanna to leave you with a love challenge. In every circumstance and situation you encounter this week, before you respond, take a breath, and then exhale the love of God into that circumstance and situation. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm taking a breath. I love these sisters so much, and we love you so much, and we end with this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the sister sharpen the other. We are sister to sister.